four shows in. Something that you did during your first show that you have corrected by your fourth show. I don't know we acting like I've been in the game for two years. <laughs> it's been a month. But uh, my first show, I was just scared because I didn't even plan on going up that night. So I was just like, my confidence was way different, my delivery, all of that. Like, And then from that show to my second show, my second set, whatever you want to call it, it was a complete 180. Um, even John knows the difference because he was at my first uh, performance. And then for my second one, you know, like, he was like, I could tell, like, it was totally different. It was just like my confidence, my delivery. Like, I practiced that like an Easter speech. Like, I was doing, like, I was valedictorian at graduation. Like, I, on my way to Escobar, I missed my exit because I was going over it so hard. But yeah, like, it was just confidence, knowing my material, development, like, punchlines, all of that. So I kind of, it just came to me. I don't, I don't know. So you said your first show, you didn't even know you was going up, so then how did you end up on stage? Well, I, I, I have been writing my jokes since November, so like I knew them, and I had like fake, came up with the order, like I would FaceTime my friend Ronnie, shout out to Ronnie, who's been supporting my whole one month career, but yeah, like we already talked about and developed how these jokes should go, so I kind of wrote them out, and then for the second one, I kind of figured out which jokes I could take out, like, oh, that wasn't that funny, okay, but like that was going to develop more on that. And yeah, I'm trying to think. Of, but how did you actually end up on stage? Cause you said I went to see my friend Ronnie. Oh. Like the place, so the place everybody was going was too full. So we went to this other place where most of the comedians just trying out new, new stuff on more other comedians. So it's a room full of comedians. So they was kind of like critiquing, I guess. And then yeah, he was like, "You may as well go in that many people here." So I had my notebook and I'm just like, "Fine, I practice it and I go up there and I did like four and a half minutes." And like they generally like the one joke they like the gym joke that I tell. So that's why I've kept that one. That's one joke I've been able to tell in every one of that I tell my natural hair joke in every one. So like my set, like comedians, the reason I haven't been so eager to post my material yet is because I don't have well, I don't have that much per perfected material, so I don't want to give out too many of my jokes because I you know, comedians have the same set, they do the same 30 minutes, hour, 10 minutes, five minute jokes every night. They may try something out, go to a comedy club and see what works with people. But it's the same thing. So they be like, oh, you told that joke before. Duh, nigga, like, that's what we do. Um, so yeah, I tried a new joke, like, from Tuesday to Wednesday, I tried a new joke out. Or like, I kind of expounded on another joke. From last week to this week, I tried a couple new jokes. I changed something up, but it was just like, okay, this works. Okay, they like that, I'm keep that, I'm gonna take this out. Okay, they didn't like that much of this, and we developed this, or whatever. So I got a couple jokes I want to put into my next thing. I want to see how people react to it. So I don't want to go to the same spot twice with the same set, you know? So, so yeah. what, um, have you had a joke that just like completely bombed, like nobody liked it or like laughed or responded to it? I haven't bombed yet. I haven't bombed yet, but like different audiences will, repop, will like receive different jokes differently. Like, like one joke will kill an Escobar, but the cats they'll be like, okay, you know what I'm saying? Or just like, it depends. Like it may be the age group, maybe it's older people in that crowd. So if I tell an Instagram joke, the 40 and up crowd ain't gonna really like, it's not gonna really resonate with them. You gotta tell a Facebook joke. Yeah, like, so I kinda gotta adjust to the crowd. If I see white people in the audience, okay, I'll tailor my natural hair joke to white people. Like, okay, white people don't touch a black woman's hair or something like that. Cause when I first told it, when I first went, it was a bunch of white people. So I was like, okay, PSA white people. And I was like, PSA niggas, even though the niggas that, most niggas that came here came with me. So it was like, they laughed at that. So it kind of, you kind of got to tailor stuff to your audience. And again, I'm over here telling them, like, I really love the fuck I'm doing. I've been doing this for a month. I mean, so, like, this is, this is like, I mean, you being able to talk about it, at yeah. least like, you know, like noticing what you have done right versus what you have done wrong. Yeah. At this point, that you've only done four shows within the span of a month. It's like, it's showing that you actually take um, a good, like, a good, well, look at me fumbling over my words. It's like, it make you actually like taking it, yeah, taking your craft seriously. Yeah, I'm taking it seriously. Uh, of course, I, I Wanda and Tiffany and some more and we'll meet yet again a month you know people be in the business i mean tiffany haddish i first saw tiffany haddish in like middle school i watched her in depth comedy jam oh no maybe it was, maybe it was ninth grade it was like 08 when she 
she's talking. I, and, it, and it's crazy because I'm like, I know her. I watched her years ago when she started blowing up. She's like, she's been in stuff for these. Yeah, long. No, nobody knew she was in com Def Comedy Jam. Yeah, I, I watched her on Def Comedy Jam years ago, so I've always known what Tiffany Haddish was. But she was on like little stuff. And then when she finally blew up, it's crazy. Because I'm like, I've been here, Tiff. I've been. Because I remember her joke. She was talking about her white friend, told her to go get a wax. She's like, no one's gonna eat your burger like that, Tiffany. And she's like, the lady took her like, who she live by? I remember that joke. It's like certain stand-up jokes that I remember, like from a kid. I never, I never realized how much stand-up I watched, like growing up, until now. I was like, that's really played a part in my life. Like I used to watch comedy every night. I used to watch the Comedy Jam. I used to watch like different specials, Comedy Central, and all of that. So now I'm going back and like studying old Def Comedy Jam, especially women. Like the content that women say. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of sex jokes and stuff. I'm trying to like ease into that because I don't even know if that's like, I mean it's light and it's like I'm grown but at the same time it's like eh, how, how far do I want to go because I got some hilarious jokes that may be too much but it's like I don't, and then the, the audience is grown too so I don't, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out how I want to ease into that. I don't want to, I ain't going to share it. I ain't going to tell it just yet but I don't think yeah. So you said something about female comedians that you've been watching and studying. Would you say that you have mimicked your style off of somebody, or would you say you got your own style so far? Again, I don't think, I haven't really developed my own style. Like, oh, that's that Melanie comedy right there, but I'm not really like, oh, let me be like Tiffany, or let me be like, because I'm not very physical. Yeah, I still haven't found my niche, so I'm still just up there just trying to get the jokes out, get the laughs. So as, as I get more experience, I think I'll figure out what my actual style is. Like, okay. I'm trying to think of different styles of female comedians, like, um, Wanda's, Wanda Sykes is more like political because she has more of a white crowd. Lunell um, is sexual. Is Lunell, hell. sexual. Some more sexual. Adele is sexual. Melanie Camacho is sexual. Melanie Camacho is sexual. Like, Melanie Camacho grew up on her too. Hilarious. Saw her last week. And she has like this OG joke that's funny every time. Like the Magnum joke where she's like, that's supposed to be dick. I've been listening to that joke since I was like 10 and I still laugh. Because it's like an OG, hilarious joke. Um, yeah, like all the female comics, like Samore, Jill Gibbons, um, Miss Laura been telling that wig joke for years, still funny. Um, I think it's more female comedians. I, and it's a lot of female comedians too, because I showed my mom my first set, it was hilarious. But she was like, I just cussed a lot. She said I said shit a lot, which was hilarious. Because I did, but I didn't realize how much. You know how you say like um a lot, you don't realize how many times you said um. So like, shit was your um? I guess shit was my um. I don't Like shit. Um, like shit. 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 Shit, that's not my shit, shit, shit. So, but a lot of comedians like it's, it's a joke right there, low key. Huh? It's a joke. <laughs> we gonna be doing this like joke <laughs> message, <laughs> joke. Um, so I'm gonna like, put like something on the video like this a joke. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. Put it in quotations. This a joke. <laughs> I tried, oh, so lost my train of thought. So somebody from Death Comedy Jam, her name was Lil Big. No, Small Fry. Small fry on Deaf Comedy Jam was real funny because a joke about how she shaved her hair and she having sex and all this stuff and she's like hopping. It's so funny and then she changed her name to Small Fire and that's just a gospel comedian. Same thing with Chocolate, Miss Chocolate, something like that. And they both gospel comedians now, like clean comedians going to church. So my mom was like, see that comedian, you stop cussing. So it's funny. I ain't there yet. I haven't established myself enough to go clean. Huh? It's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> joke. <laughs> That is your joke. Um, so yeah, like those are my influences. Then of course, like I grew up, Paul Mooney loved him to death, saw him last week too. Uh, me, I knew him from Chappelle show actually. I mean, I can't help that I knew him from Chappelle show. But Nero Domus and stuff. Then one day me and my dad had caught one of his specials, Know Your History, on like Showtime or something. And we sat up late and watched it. It was so funny. Low key may have changed my life because it was just like, I love this man. So he just sits at the mic just like this and just talks shit, but it's like, Political, historical, they're saying like white people stole us in Africa, but they didn't keep the receipt. Like all the big shit comes from Africa, big lips, big ass, big titties, all the big stuff. Uh, I don't see what he's saying. <laughs> Talk about how slaves built the White House. They were just like, oh, the niggas finished. Call it the White House. <laughs> Did you ever know the niggas called it? Or no? <laughs> just, I'm sorry. I could quote this stand up all day. When he was talking about the Titanic, it's like, you niggas can't. <laughs> You niggas can't come on the Titanic with those heavy, those, wait, those heavy nigga bones, you'll drown. Which is. 
how many people died? The sharks eat like they ain't the same as good as some niggas that we had them years before. It's not. Palm on his jeans. Uh, I not. I, Chappelle comedy, I didn't find him funny until recently. Like his Netflix comedy, because I didn't like Killing Me Softly and stuff. Uh, and then Chris Rock, I liked his old stuff. I didn't like his current Netflix. But like, still grew up on him. Didn't, Martin, um, who just had a, someone else just had a, a comedy special. <laughs> Chris Rock. Nah, it was like somebody else. Yeah. Is it white? D-Ray? No. It's, an, it's Netflix. It was um, it was Chris Rock and somebody else. Who Somebody somebody literally just had another. I could swear. Um, maybe I'm tripping. Was Nesh Bell? He just had something. Nah, it was, it, it was this. It was this. It'll come. Oh, Cat Williams. Cat Williams had a Netflix? He did? It's called Great America? Nah, this was like, this is like more like recent. Like, I want to say it came out of March. I didn't watch it. And I want to say it was a white comedian. A white comedian? Oh, white people have Netflix stuff all the time. No, white people, you know? Yeah, never mind. I guess, I don't know. I could be tripping. All no, right. No, white people have, like, we just don't know because they like white. Okay. Um, so, a month ago, you did not think you were going to be here. Where you see yourself a month from now? I don't know. A month from now, I hope I can start getting paid. I mean, I'm not going to rush the process because people have been in this thing for years. It's still in the same club I'm at. So... I would like to start like getting paid. Like, I mean, like, books. what does it take to get paid? You gotta I mean, actually get actually, booked. When people actually book you, like, okay, I need you to open up in ten minutes to so and so, and open up this person, that person. So once I get to that level, be lit, cause money, uh, and get my name and face out there, get my, cause it's like from a lot of people that I met, I, I have like a leg up by having like a social media following just off me being me for the past what six years since I had Instagram. So that's good. Like people. OGs that have more followers in them just because like I don't know if you know this it's a couple I don't know years months ago but like real life stand-up comedians and like Instagram comedians are like beefing because they're like y'all not real comedians or something like that so it's kind of like I want the, to establish myself as a real comedian versus I'm not very like buying funny because if I was buying funny I would have been buying famous so I'm more you know I don't know I don't know how it fit in with skits I'm going to start collaborating with people with skits and stuff I mean, that would be fun but I just want to Kind of get my stand up. Uh, okay. yeah. All right. 